Welcome to Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast, your podcast dedicated to all things Animal Crossing. Episode 157 is brought to you by Jesse Lyberg, Amber, and Jessica Lynn, some of our newest Patreon patrons. This week, Nina, Sergio, and I are speaking with first-time Animal Crossing players about their experiences with New Horizons. Join us as we get to know what brought them to the Animal Crossing series. So to begin, hello Sergio, how are you doing? Hi Chewie, I'm doing pretty awesome. Easy peasy lemon squeechy day so far. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And then the hi Nina, how are you? I'm doing pretty good. I'm I'm ready for this week to be over so that we can go into a nice restful Thanksgiving break. <laughs> But I'm alright. It's Monday. It's, it's Monday. Monday. And I should be in bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, you're right. We're, we're keeping you up late once again. <laughs> um, cool. So I guess before we hop into these interviews, I did want to talk to both of you about who you interviewed. And, you know, maybe we can get a little teaser of what to expect for the audience here. But from as you all heard, we are interviewing first-time players of Animal Crossing, at least you know, mostly first time. Some of ours, I know Jackie's first experience with the game. Um, By the way, I interviewed Jackie, Mm -hmm. my partner in crime. Um, (laughs) But her first game was actually Pocket Camp. But Mm. I considered her like first real experience with Animal Crossing New Horizons, you know? (laughs) Right, right. Yeah. So I guess, Sergio, who did you get to interview? I got to interview Nathan. He is in our Haken Discord, but he's more active on the Nintendo Jump podcast, Animal Crossing channel. And yeah, he's been playing the game since launch. He's been playing a lot. He's also shared his uh, game with his significant other. So it's been like a, a shared experience too. He did start with Pocket Camp and he, he's going to talk a little bit about that later. But yeah, his, his big main experience is with New Horizons. <laughs> yeah, that's kind of funny. Two for two with the first game being Pocket Camp. Yeah, it seems like Nintendo's strategy, the mobile strategy, really paid oh, off here. That's true. <laughs> yeah, that is yeah. true. Yeah, and then Nina, I guess who did you get to interview? So I interviewed um, my bestest mensch, uh, Michi, who um, who is newer to the um, Haken Discord. She joined um, when New Horizons came out. Uh, and she played a little bit of Population Growing way back in the day, but then hadn't played any Animal Crossing at all until I basically um, bullied her into playing New Horizons. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you well, know, that's, it's a good take. That's, yeah, that's pretty awesome considering, like, you know, a big gap like that. It's mm-hmm. basically like you played a, a totally different game at that point. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Yeah, well, awesome. I am excited to hear both of your interviews, so we'll get into it. I'd like to welcome Jackie. I'm going to be asking her some questions about her experience with Animal Crossing, so let's get started. When did you first hear about Animal Crossing? (laughs) Probably not long after I met you. I think, well, I don't know, because I don't think there was a game out when we met, or like, what this the one that we're currently playing this is like the first one in like seven years right Mm -hmm. okay so i'm trying to think did one come out when you knew me um yeah i think probably the year after we'd met Hmm. well maybe that that explains things what was the question again (laughs) (laughs) when did you first hear about animal crossing okay well it's from you obviously um and you might have tried to sort of explain what it is, but I don't think I ever saw you play on, like, the old system, whatever that was called. Um, but I sort of came to know it, uh, I guess, through your growing enthusiasm as this this game was eventually <laughs> released and um, you doing the podcast, obviously. And I guess that's when I got a lot better sense of exactly what it was. Um I do recall when we were moving and I think you had your own place and I didn't really comprehend the idea of like liking to sort of design and decorate a room and not liking also to do it in real life (laughs) (laughs) because that's what I like to do. Um, Not like a whole lot, but you know, I like my apartment or whatever we're in to like look nice. Um, And so 
I thought that was sort of an interesting parallel, but one that didn't really translate as easily. Yeah, (laughs) I get that. Um, So I guess just for everybody's background, what was your first Animal Crossing game? This, oh, actually Pocket Camp is the first. That came out, was it two years ago or a year ago now? I think it's three years now. No, really? Mm -hmm. Okay, I think I played it pretty regularly for a few months, I would say. And then, you know, the little animals kind of, they get needy and they need the same things all the time. (laughs) And it was like, man, I'm doing so much work just to like make them happy. I want to go explore and like (laughs) discover new things and sort of interact with the game in a different way than I think it wanted me to. So Mm -hmm. I kind of stopped playing that, but it did, um, I guess, interest me in the next game and... Uh, a lot of the characters are really cute. I'm, I met Stella there, right? That's her <laughs> yeah. name, the little purple sheep. She's adorable. So I had like a character to look forward to who I actually haven't gotten on my island just yet. So she'll sort of be maybe something to look forward to again. Yeah. Yeah. And I also remember playing Pocket Camp with you and it didn't help that our phones weren't that great. So. Oh, that's right. The yeah. loading screen would take forever. So, yeah, that's probably one of the big reasons I stopped playing, too. (laughs) There was always an update, and I was always sick of updating, and then at one point, like, I don't think my phone could handle any more (laughs) updates. Yeah, mine couldn't either. Granted, I had this phone for, like, you know, five or six years. Mm -hmm. I was a little stubborn about getting rid of it. (laughs) Yeah. So you got into this a little bit, but what did you think of Animal Crossing when you first heard of it before you even played what did I think? Uh, I guess it's hard for me to put myself back in that mindset of what it what it would be like. Um, I think mostly I was sort of worried about uh, how to use the controllers, and I guess this could be sort of applied to any video game because I don't I don't really play them. And like with Pocket Camp on the phone, like it's pretty <laughs> intuitive. You just like tap and touch the screen. But with this one, I was like, uh, I'm, I was sort of worried if it would be just like a real hassle just to really figure out how to use the buttons. Um, so that was a worry coming in. Obviously, I knew you'd be patient in teaching me, <laughs> but I was just wondering if that would sort of be a distraction the whole time and that I couldn't sort of just like zone out into the game because of my lack of uh, dexterity with with <laughs> controller buttons yeah it's definitely a learning process of figuring out what a controller is and how <laughs> it works and everything um so i guess what did you think of new horizons when you first heard of it i guess just based on now you've had some prior experience with the game and this was the first kind of full feature length game mm-hmm. you could say for the series What did I think of it when it, like, first came out or when When you first heard of it? Yeah. First heard of it. Um, Well, I guess I first heard about it from you, and then I think we saw the early trailers. And so, like, that looked pretty fun um, to sort of create a little character that couldn't look like us, which I think (laughs) the skin tones have been an improvement, right? Yeah. yeah, Okay. And that was the same in Pocket Camp, too, I think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you could pick your skin color and everything. So, like, my little avatar, my little me... um, that was nice to sort of have them look like me too. Um, and I think I'm trying to think, um, I guess my impressions was that it looked exciting. It looked like you could do a lot in the game. Um, like visually speaking, it was really sort of entertaining with like all the colorful grass and trees and little characters walking around talking to you. So, um, at least from what I could see in the trailer, Uh, It looked pretty appealing. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I always thought it was pretty cute. Um, So I guess, why did you finally pick up the game and start playing? I mean, I know I'm probably (laughs) a big part of that, but I I wasn't going to try to force you. (laughs) Yeah, well, for one, you gave me a Switch, and it was the only game on there. Not that I sort of asked or knew if I was going to play anything else. So, um, yeah, I guess we kind of just... I'm trying to remember, like, oh, gosh, I'm probably saying that a lot on this interview. Um, But I think we started our island sort of relatively at the same time. The first day Mm -hmm. it was sort of available to do that. So it was kind of nice to kind of peek over 
at least at your screen, like, oh, have you done this yet? Or are you discovering mm-hmm. that? And um, the character is sort of limited to that one little section of grass. But it was kind of cool to have, you know, little tasks to do to go ahead and sort of start upgrading the the tools you had and eventually your house. Although, like, I was trying to, like, make the tent last a little bit longer. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. What... Uh, do you want me to sort of elaborate on any of that? or? Yeah, I guess, I mean, so you've played Pocket Camp and now you've played this one. Did you yeah. kind of prefer the direction that you were allowed to go with in New Horizons? Yeah, I, I do like sort of the sort of open world concept where you can kind of run around and do whatever instead of like having to... I think the thing I, I dislike the most and that's sort of like, I think just a quality of the game itself is the loading screens when you go in between a door. Mm-hmm. It's like very similar to Pocket Camp when you like travel to another area of, I guess it's an island or mm-hmm. <laughs> campsite where it's sort of the loading screen. Um, so that I don't really spend too much time inside at all. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So now that you're playing... What do you think of the game? It's fun. <laughs> I <laughs> I feel like I've done a lot and it's been kind of, it's brought my artistic side out a little bit more and how I sort of design my spaces and kind of think about them as like, uh, I don't know, like little set designs and I really want it to be cohesive and <laughs> pleasing and just to be like this perfect little island that looks sort of effortless, but everything is like, you know, thought about so, <laughs> so in such detail. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just thinking back to when I was like um, first moving buildings or placing buildings and how many times I would like do the, you know, view view option. What, what's the phrase I used, you know? Um, where they're like, see it, see it in this spot. Kind oh, of I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I do remember you take, like you know you screenshots yes. and see how it looks and yeah then... and like continually like dig holes to know where I was standing mm-hmm. when I was like oh view this in this spot and see what that looks like um because I was like so intent I was like it's so much money I'm only gonna do this once it has to be the right spot <laughs> <laughs> uh so yeah yeah um so I guess how do you feel about the villagers who live on your island the villagers have been good. My first villagers were, was it Sheldon, the, the squirrel, and Phoebe, the phoenix. Did we get three? I think we got two. We got two. I think those were the two. Um, yeah, also remind me of the question if I like, start going off on a trail, <laughs> but I think I can go with this one. Um, yeah, they've been good. I I mean, eventually those two moved away. I think my frustration with, like, the original pair was that they wouldn't upgrade their houses along with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I kept giving them stuff, thinking that they would replace their sleeping bag with a bed, and they just wouldn't. they just, like, throw it there. <laughs> and so that was like, oh, man, like, I got to know these characters well, but I guess I'm going to have to send them on their way. Um, and then the characters since... Um, I have been able to use the Amiibo card, so I was able to invite a few of the ones that I think I wanted. Like, um, right now I have Rowan, who I think I scanned in. He's the orange tiger. And Knox, I think I also scanned him in. He's the chicken with the helmet on his head. (laughs) Um, villager, I also have villagers that I don't think I will let ever move away. And part of it's because they're my favorite. But part of it feels like they're just um, a bit of what makes my island my island, you know? Like yeah. Tangerina, Tangerina. Um, <laughs> so those characters, I guess it would be Wade. He's my little white penguin who lives on a beach. <laughs> and then um, Elise, she's a monkey who I like to refer to as my grandma <laughs> for my little character. Um, and she's sort of... Uh, I don't know, her house just sort of perfectly embodies this, like, uh, I don't know, like, old folks little apartment home kind of thing. She has, like, a shower and a bed and, like, a big sturdy desk with, like, an office chair behind it and, like, a little mini kitchen. Um, And I always, 
make her say, oh, like, hello, darling. <laughs> <laughs> and she wears Sunday hats and, like, old people clothes. Um, <laughs> so she's, yeah, she's adorable. I'm never going to let her go. Um, who else? I've had Norma for a long time. Mm-hmm. And she's a cute little pink cow. I found her on an island the same way as I found Wade. And they were, like, my group right after my first sort of set of two. Mm -hmm. So I guess you said those houses don't change. They're sort of like, oh, they have a few books and a bed. Or they have, like, a cabin-looking feel. Yeah, basically. I don't think Elise is one of those for you. I think she moved in a little bit later. But, yeah, yeah, I think Norma and Wade kind of have those those mm-hmm. set designs that come with those characters. Yeah. I call them first fibers. <laughs> <The laughs> I other... just I just got rid of one of my first fibers, Wendy, the little blue sheep. Oh, yeah. um, she was on my island for a long time, and I just got her picture, and so I sent her on her way. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so there, there I have two first fibers, <laughs> I guess, <laughs> and then a few that I invited for Amiibo cards, and then some um, I just sort of like – at least for Wendy, the recent one who left, um, I kind of get curious of like, oh, who will pop up if I like let them leave and then go go searching on an island? And so I kind of like that that mystery component. It feels more <laughs> exciting about like, oh, the possibilities, even yeah. though you have like these binders of all these characters, but it's kind of like Netflix where you can make <laughs> a decision. <laughs> so I'm kind of like, oh, leave it up to chance, see who comes. Um, yeah. And I was like, planning to go to a lot of islands but the first one I went to there was this cute little dog with a with a little spot on his eye called bones um <laughs> and I was like okay you're you're adorable you can come to my island I don't care <laughs> if you're like the fourth lazy villager I have uh that's okay <laughs> yeah those lazy ones they're they're a good group I think a lot of people like a lot of them I know man I wish there's more variety to the personality but yeah I'm sort of I constantly just sort of point to one. I'm like, oh, is, what personality is this? And, you know, nine times <laughs> out of ten, I'll be true. You'll say that's a lazy character. <laughs> so. <laughs> yeah. But the villagers overall have been, I think, a nice part of the the Animal Crossing experience. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, friendly. yeah, kind of based on that, this is a bit of a tangent. It's not written down here. But do you have any, like, villagers who left and it was kind of a heartbreak afterwards oh, you know this <laughs> <laughs> uh eugene the koala left i he was sort of like he had a little office space and it was like clearly he was an undercover agent mm-hmm. and he had a lot of this like worldly knowledge about like i don't know how they eat their omelets in italy i don't know <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i i sort of it was like a very bittersweet uh, passing or like him leaving the island. He had asked me a couple times about wanting to go explore the world and it just felt like so within his character to do that. And so I felt bad holding him here, <laughs> imprisoning <laughs> him here on my island. Um, and so I let him go and I really missed him the next day and a few days after because of the things he would say were just like really delightful and and like smart and funny um and I kind of like the backstory that I sort of built in my mind around him too Mm -hmm. um and so I I sort of have this tradition um I think I forget whose island it was of like writing the names of the villagers who've gone on to other islands Mm -hmm. on the rocks yeah um using the patterns I think that's Nina's Nina's okay I was like oh that's such a great idea because I would totally (laughs) forget I mean I haven't maybe there's like six names there I haven't had a whole lot of villagers go in and out Mm -hmm. um and so I added his name to there and like Whenever a character leaves, I usually go, you know, the day while they're packing and they kind of say what they're going to do and they're really excited to go. And my Mm -hmm. villagers just has that constant, like, sigh motion. (laughs) (laughs) The little sound, like, oh. Yeah. (laughs) Um, So he left and I kind of, like, visited the rock and I'd see his name there and I just felt like, oh, man, I miss him. And at some point I was like, well, I got his, like, card here. You know, maybe I can bring him back after a little while. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, but, like, I wonder if he'll remember me. And I was like, oh, man, I don't know. Um, So I was part in my mind, like, building this idea of, like, maybe he gets amnesia and all this stuff. But, 
yeah, I don't know if I'm ready to sort of face the, <laughs> the <laughs> truth of him uh, not recognizing who I am. Yeah. And I didn't get his photo. This oh. was before I got any of my character's photos. And it just felt like it would literally take forever mm -hmm. um, until you were telling me, oh, you just have to start giving them like... 10 apples wrapped <laughs> up every day and it will happen so since that I've gotten three or four photos yeah well you could always also build up that little uh background for him and just say he went on a mission got amnesia you need to <laughs> bring him back <laughs> I know like Jason Bourne <laughs> yeah exactly I know I might I might have to <laughs> Yeah. So I guess, are you time traveling or playing in normal time? <laughs> you know the answer to this. I, I don't know if I technologically know how to time travel, <laughs> uh, but I'm playing in normal time. It's kind of exciting to see the changing seasons. And I think so much can happen in like, I don't know, 15 minutes or a day. So it seems, I, it would feel kind of like spoilers to sort of jump ahead and behind and to like, I don't know. I had a hard time like, even getting my house bigger than my other villagers because I was like, oh, it's going to look like I'm so pretentious. <laughs> and they've got these little one-room houses with all like this mansion over here. So yeah. in part, I feel like, oh, man, they can't time travel either. Like, mm -hmm. um, yeah. And that's not, that's been a complaint about it for a long time. Like, people want to see their villagers, like, grow their houses mm -hmm. and get bigger and better places. But I don't know if they'll ever do it. Hopefully one day. Yeah, maybe we can at least sort of design the inside and outside. That'd be kind of nice, too. Yeah, hopefully. Maybe. Um, <laughs> so I guess I, I'm gaining, getting from this, you're not really, you don't really see the appeal of time travel. Um, I guess I see the appeal. I suppose if you're like, I mean, I guess if you want to sort of work quickly and have all these items. Okay, so for like right now, I don't have any mushroom, mm -hmm. like beside any mushroom lesson cards besides the door wreath and I just can keep picking up these mushrooms and so I don't know does time travel help you get those items <laughs> <laughs> probably not <laughs> okay so, so um yeah I mean maybe I, I guess I, I can kind of understand why people do it but I, I don't know if I need it <laughs> mm -hmm. so is there anything you dislike about the game hmm. anything I dislike I mean, I think just sort of the general things people dislike about it. Um, you showed me this video one time. It was fan-made, but I didn't know it at the time. <laughs> and there was all these updates that sounded delightful and, like, really fun. So, like, uh, you know, traveling to someone's island doesn't sort of freeze everyone into what they're doing and having to wait for those like five circles to mm -hmm. light up for them to land and then come on that kind of transitional um time spent on that uh what else um hmm. I'm trying to think oh putting trees like being able to put trees close to cliffs and buildings mm -hmm. I know it might be a fire hazard, but I'm willing to take the risk. Uh, things like, yeah, things like that, like when you have sort of placement issues or like, um, yeah, I'm sure you, you can mention a few that you find your frustrations the, with and I would agree. I mean, the trees are a big one for me, for sure. I just want to be able to put them right next to something. But... Ooh, I have a big one. Um, interacting. Okay, so Pocket Camp, I guess, spoiled me because I it's not possible in this version of the game, but in Pocket Camp, you can go on the carousel and the teacups, and <laughs> I don't know if you can climb in the treehouse, if that was an option. Maybe it was. Um, but you could really interact with a lot of the bigger items that were placed, mm -hmm. and I was just... I couldn't believe, or maybe you couldn't, but the other villagers could get on them. Yeah, the villagers could get okay. on them. Okay, this was a like call my head in pocket camp where I was really frustrated. I was like, they're having fun on this carousel. Why can't I get on that? <laughs> um, <laughs> but here it's even worse. Not, the villagers can't go on it, and you can't go on it either. It's just like <laughs> this, like, uh, <laughs> just this thing dangling in front of you that's just kind of taunting. <laughs> That's yeah. one thing I have that I don't like. <laughs> yeah, I get that for sure. I think Quantrell, who listens to the show, he often mentions how great it is that the villagers can interact with the things. <laughs> um, yeah. Hopefully they add it. Who knows? I mean, there's a big update for Pocket Camp coming pretty soon, and I wonder if it's going to 
bring anything to New Horizons at all, but... I think we'll of see. the updates coming, that will be the last one. <laughs> <laughs> you think uh, they're probably not going to support Pocket Camp after this? No, or? the updates of, like, oh, if they're going to update to let animals and you interact oh, with, I like, see. the items. I don't think that's going to happen. Yeah. Who knows? <laughs> probably oh, not. so frustrating. So, I guess, now based on kind of what you dislike, what do you like about the game? Like, what's kind of kept you playing and checking in? Yeah, I think I played every day for a lot of weeks when it first came out. Mm -hmm. And then I'm trying to recall if it was, like, end of summer or even before that. I I believe that. It seemed like a lot of people kind of, like, started trailing off around that summertime. I, like, missed a few days, and it, like, wasn't a big deal. Um, I think other things in, like, my real life sort of took priority with time, um, like, editing a book and all that kind of stuff. So it wasn't really on my mind. Um, And it didn't feel like uh, I was sort of missing out on anything either. Um, I would sort of, like, uh, check in, like, see what you were doing, if there was, like, a fishing tourney or bug catching stuff. And uh, I didn't really care about that much. Um, (laughs) So was the question, like, how... What what I do like? Yeah, what what do you like? Oh, what do I like? How did I come to this part? Um, (laughs) Oh, why did I keep coming back to it? Right. Um, I think the changing seasons are exciting to sort of see and to kind of experience a little world in all these sort of different colors. So I was excited for the fall, and I think once fall started happening. that was kind of cool because I could start reimagining what each space could look like with these different colors on the trees and sort of what items seem more suitable for the fall. So, like, I sort of traded out, like, swimming pools and, like, other things for pumpkin patches and <laughs> just trying to plant <laughs> a lot of pumpkins. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I was really excited about the pumpkin stuff because, I don't know, I think things you get excited about in real life you can get excited about in, like, a little virtual game. So... I I like to decorate, and that's something that keeps me coming back. And then um, now that I have some more motivation or, like, more a clear understanding of how to get photos from my villagers, I've been working – I've been interacting with them more just to give them uh, gifts, and that sort of paid off nicely. Um, But, yeah, I think my goal has sort of been the same since the start, which is just to make, like – every spot on the island as idealistic as possible (laughs) and that those sort of ideals I sometimes meet when I'm surprised by and excited by so I just did this one spot where um I was sort of frustrated that I made train tracks but they didn't really go anywhere Mm -hmm. and so I had sort of gotten inspiration from videos and things of to make like a tunnel for the train to go through using the stone arch um so I put that together and I'm finding like areas where like roads sort of meet and there's like a lot going on. I'm sort of mostly pleased with. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so I guess, yeah, that sort of goal of making everything look as- exactly as I want it. <laughs> um, will probably continue. And because the seasons change, I'll keep wanting to sort of change that up based on the sort of um, time of year <laughs> and, and maybe what villagers I have. I like to decorate their houses based on, the character that's inside just like a little bit yeah so are you looking forward to the first snow day yeah i'm really curious like what the paths are gonna look like mm. if there's gonna be snow falling would be really cool and because we live in like a place currently where we do get all those seasons i really like to have the, like experience in the game roughly match what's happening in real life mm. you know if we were still in arizona <laughs> we're not gonna get a snow day yeah. <laughs> but right here you know um, we've already gotten some snow. Yeah, it's been really snowy. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, my last question is, do you think you'll play future titles, the ones that come out after New Horizons? Well, I imagine I have a long time to wait before that will happen. <laughs> <laughs> you do. <laughs> so I guess yes, I will say. Um, if Yeah, I don't, I don't see why not, I think. It's been nice to have something to be excited about together, too, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I get to sort of see what your character's working on, and um, you, I like to show you off, like, what I've done, too. So I imagine that'll translate pretty fluidly to the next game yeah. and the next, yeah. Yeah, it's really fun to share that. I'm really <laughs> happy you've been enjoying it. Yeah. Uh-huh. 
Well, I want to thank you for joining, and hopefully we hear some other really cool things from other first-time players. Oh, yeah. It is my first time. (laughs) (laughs) Thanks, Chewie. Yeah, no problem. Thanks, Jackie. Hello, everyone. This is Sergio, and today I have Nathan with us. Nathan is a new player to Animal Crossing. Nathan, how are you? Doing well. Hi, Sergio. Hi. Um, Awesome to have you here. Thank you for joining. So we have a couple of questions for you, like we have been asking our new Animal Crossing players. So to begin, when did you first hear about Animal Crossing? I've been a long-time video game fan and definitely a Nintendo fan. Uh, I would estimate it would be around the time that New Leaf was released in uh, 2013, 2014, somewhere around there. Mm. Um, One of the first memorable things I remember hearing, and after looking it up, this didn't happen in New Leaf, but I remember hearing that there were full NES games that you could find and then play inside Animal Crossing. right. I, I guess that wasn't in the, the but that that made an impact on me. I heard this this like life sim where you walk around and collect cartridges and then you play the cartridges. That seemed really fun to me. Oh, gotcha. And at that time, would you were you able to play New Leaf? But maybe you just weren't interested, or no, I didn't have uh, any Nintendo uh, devices. Um, I grew mm. up with the, my sister's uh, NES at home, um, and when I first heard about Animal Crossing, I only had a computer, uh, n- no Nintendo anything. Um, my first, uh, the, the first Nintendo device that I purchased, and actually I never had a Game Boy even, was the Switch. Oh, oh, nice, <laughs> cool. So. What did you think of the game when you first heard about it, before you played it? Um, The reputation and the sales numbers really piqued my interest. Uh, I do like most of Nintendo's games, and I definitely like Nintendo's games that sell millions of copies. I I find Mm -hmm. I'm kind of right in the middle of of Nintendo's demographic (laughs) there. And so I hear that this is, you know, one of the most popular games on 3DS, that uh, it sells, you know, Mario Kart, Mario Pokemon levels. And uh, so that uh, automatically means it's something I should look into. Um, when I read up into it a bit, um, I thought it was perhaps a little too much dialogue and text with all the villagers. Um, I, I mm. do really like simulation games, SimCity. I played The Sims, uh, the very first iteration, um, but I, I wasn't sure that I wanted to do uh, you know paragraphs and paragraphs of dialogue and text with all the animals every day. Right, right. <laughs> And would you say you're you're a fan of the genre, like of um, simulation type games, or maybe you just kind of like them every now and then? Yeah, definitely a big fan of the simulation games. I one of my absolute mm. favorite games in childhood was uh, SimCity 2000. So the the whole idea of this you know living uh, thing that you create inside the video game uh, it definitely piqued my interest there. Uh, making a town, or in this game, an island. Uh, de- right. definitely was keen to, to, to play that. Um, also, the Splatoon developers uh, had already made quite an impression on me uh, before New Horizons <laughs> came out. So, Yeah, that's actually a very good point. I know you're an avid Splatoon 2 player. And I, I want to play uh, every game that the Splatoon team makes because I think <laughs> that I just really you know connect with them in the games that they yeah. make. That's, that's actually a very interesting and very nice approach, I would say. So... Why did you finally pick it up? For New Horizons, um, I'm a frequent Discord member uh, in the uh, Nintendo Jump podcast. You might have heard of it, Sergio. I I do recommend it. (laughs) Um, And and, uh, Swilly uh, on NJP was uh, going on an Animal Crossing spree, giving out copies of Animal Crossing. So I I was looking through the history, and I uh, won a digital copy on Nintendo Jump on Valentine's Day of this year. So that oh, was wow, why nice. I started playing, because I got the game from Swilly. <laughs> awesome. Interestingly, along those lines, uh, my girlfriend played Switch very infrequently, um, and <laughs> uh, and she started playing uh, two weeks after I started playing Animal Crossing. Uh, she, she thought I wasn't uh, decorating up to her standards, and so she said she wanted a <laughs> character. She was going to come in here, and she was going to clean house and, and make it look good. <laughs> And now she bought her own Switch for Animal Crossing. (laughs) Oh, wow. (laughs) I guess she she really got into it, huh? Yes. Nice, nice. So now that you have been playing, you know, it's... um, You you got it at launch then, I I assume? Yes. Yeah, I played it the night of launch. 
Nice. So, yeah, it's been well over six months or maybe even seven. So now that you have been playing, what do you think of the game overall? I think it's absolutely one of the best games on Switch. I mean, I have played, I think, more than 500 hours in the last six months. I oh, mean, wow. It's been a, a <laughs> strange year with a lot more video games than, you know, had necessarily expected. Um, but it it has been wonderful. Um, I the the preconceived notions that i had coming into it was that maybe the decorating would be a little overwhelming uh but i was hoping to enjoy you know other aspects of it i found that the dialogue and the text wasn't too much um but mm, i nice. i really enjoy multiplayer online um there's been a huge number of people uh family friends from my you know real life that many of whom even if they're in the same town i haven't seen them at all this year but i've been over to their uh their island 10 times and right. so I've really oh, enjoyed nice. connecting virtually with a lot of people, both on Discord, but then also people from real life. Um, I find it really relaxing. It's definitely a good game to kind of uh, settle down in the evenings and play a bit and then uh, and then settle down to go to sleep. Oh, nice. So uh, are you still playing daily for the most part? Uh, I would say I'm playing every two to three days. Um, okay. I am on the same island as uh, as my uh, my domestic partner, um, and she plays absolutely every day. So I mm. know what's happening on the island, uh, even if I'm not playing. And and if I hear that you know CJ shows up or a- anything you know it is coming up, if there's a, a campsite villager uh, visitor, um, then I absolutely jump in. But I, I find that <laughs> I I hear about our island every day, but I'm playing maybe every two or three days. Oh, gotcha. That's a that's actually kind of a cool approach. Like something that you hear about sort of like triggers you. Yeah, I want to actually play that part. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Nice. So, out of the villagers that you have had, if anybody has moved or not, or or the ones you have now, what do you think of the villagers? Do you have a favorite? I absolutely have a favorite. Um, I mean, of the ones that move onto and off of the island, it's Samson, and uh, he was the sixth or seventh that showed up uh just cute little you know mouse that uh i don't know i I thought the idea of this guy talking about muscles when he's one of the smallest uh species (laughs) is just hilarious and he has been on the island since march um so uh samson and samson and mary have been around since the beginning and uh and other than that everybody else has kind of rolled through my my Mm. favorite experiences with the villagers are the events uh, for example, in August, when the fireworks started happening, uh, when they all would run out and, you know, scream and cheer, um, I enjoyed them on Halloween, uh, during fishing tournaments and, and bug tournaments. Um, I don't find myself talking to them on, uh, you know, super daily basis. I've gotten, mm. I, this is kind of notable. Uh, so I played 500 hours and I've gotten one photo <laughs> <laughs> and it's Samson's photo. Oh, nice. Okay. Um, I, so, I mean, I talk to them, but I, I don't give gifts on a regular basis. Um, and, and, I mean, there's a lot of things to I know about to do to increase your uh, friendship. Right. But I I guess we're, we're all kind of more acquaintances than friends. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it's, it's a bit of a process. You have to, like, be very dedicated about it and very constant about it. The thing that I'm super dedicated about in Animal Crossing is the museum. Uh, mm. Blathers is my favorite character on the whole island um i he does all the scientific descriptions of everything um i have listened to every description for every creature uh in the game from black nice. our, our museum is complete and uh that was that that has been the the key task for me in animal crossing was was filling up this museum from uh northern hemisphere southern hemisphere um not time traveling out of the month but i, I definitely now that it's been six months, I've had access to everything because right. I've been to Northern Hemisphere and Southern Hemisphere Islands. Oh, nice, nice. That's a man. So you were very dedicated, huh? Yeah. So yeah, I mean, the, the I would say I talk to Blathers twice as frequently as I talk to any of the villagers. <laughs> um, I, I bring him in stuff, uh, especially if I forgot or or a little foggy on what he's going to say about it, and I have him like describe it to me all over again. Right. Um, I, I also like the fact that he doesn't like bugs so i bring him in big bugs and have him <laughs> squirm <laughs> nice so you mentioned you you haven't done any time traveling at all um 
I have personally not done the time traveling, but I live on the island with girlfriend who has time traveled a little <laughs> bit on our island. Um, only a, we we played completely normally, uh, never touched the clock for three or four months mm-hmm. straight right after launch. And uh, right now we are occasionally time traveling to reduce stress. Um, we have a friend that you know texts us and says, "Hey, I missed the fishing tournament." We'll you know, roll the clock back a day in order to do the fishing tournament with them. Hmm. Uh, and uh, and then the other thing that we've done is uh, special events. Um, you, you know, you might want to do Halloween with other people on, on Halloween night and then do it a different day and have them come to your island. So we haven't been too precious about, you know, never touching the clock for those reasons. And then the, the last thing that I found useful for time traveling is if we're getting villagers from a friend, it's a lot easier if you are willing to jump forward or back a couple of days to make sure that you line up somebody else's boxes with your open plot. Right, right, right. Um, I, I, it, it seems almost impossible to me. Um, I don't have a you know, huge friend group uh, on Animal Crossing to get people to line up to just you know randomly have an open plot right when one of your friends has a villager available to trade, to take. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's true. And I mean, from what you describe, it sounds like you kind of doing the fun part of time traveling so yeah that's that's pretty cool i i found that the the best part about the occasional time travel only a couple days here or there is it's reducing stress in real life yeah uh where where i don't have to let's say i've got a busy saturday but tournaments i mean i love the fish i love the bugs i've participated in every single tournament i really want to play each tournament for a couple of hours right. and having that freedom to play it late on saturday night or play it on sunday whenever i'm available uh has made has made the game more fun and less stressful Mm -hmm. that's a good point nice now i mean unfortunately it's not all you know sunshine and butterflies what is there anything (laughs) you dislike about the game there are a lot of butterflies yeah Um, (laughs) uh, um, a couple of things is that uh my girlfriend and i have played on the same island and that was really fun it also would have been fun if she um was able to get her own island and i mean from a kind of business standpoint we ended up buying a second switch so Mm -hmm. it worked but if we were able to have multiple (laughs) islands per switch uh that would have been really nice Uh, and i can see that being maybe even more important for like families with children uh yeah that you know either they're all going to get along together on the island or it's just going to be one person's game because you know people don't want to be live on the same island and have the same villagers. I feel like it's a much better game to share amongst adults compared to the children yeah. in uh, my life. Uh, my nephews, my girlfriend's nephews, there's been, you know, occasional friction around uh, one switch in the house, one island, multiple humans with different ideas about yeah, yeah. <laughs> where bridges should go, about, you know, whether or not Bob should stay or Bob should go. <laughs> um, and then the, the other couple of things are maybe a little more minor. Uh, multiplayer takes a little while to set up. It's good once you're going. I'm always afraid of disconnecting because I don't want to lose progress or have other people lose their progress, especially if you're on their island for an hour. Yeah, you're, yeah. You know, really trying to make progress. Uh, it, it, it it is a, a constant worry uh, that a disconnect is going to revert everything. Um, and and I'd I'd enjoy it if the uh, non-player characters like Blathers uh, came outside. His uh, his sister comes, you know, uh, Celeste comes around and Blathers never sees her, as far <laughs> as I can tell. True, yeah. And I I have zero issues with the you know museum having a sign on the front that says like, you know, I'm out, come back tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, I think it would be it, it would be a big upgrade for me if if uh, Blathers, if the Timmy and Tommy, the Able sisters were occasionally just out, you know, that that uh, they that they walked around like the uh, other ten villagers. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Nice. So, what what do you like about the game? What 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 parts sort of stand out from the bunch? Um, I do absolutely adore the design, the whole concept of Animal Crossing as this uh, simulation. I you know played a lot of SimCity, a lot of Sims, but they were never real time. Uh, you know, when the leaves are falling outside, it's not necessarily the leaves are falling in your SimCity town. I think that that's a brilliant concept and it has really worked well to keep me there hasn't been a week in which I have not played uh since launch and I was not expecting Animal Crossing to be like a forever game but it kind of is for mm. me. 
Um, and uh, and I, I do love that things are a little bit different, surprising every day, where you get uh, different visitors, you know, the seasons, the events. I'm really looking forward to the updates, um, and, and I look forward to playing this game for years. Nice, nice. And with that in mind, do you think you're going to pick up future titles? Are you basically an Animal Crossing fan now? I can't see not playing future titles. Um, I don't want them to show up soon because, you know, I'd like to see this game kind of flesh out and, right. uh, you know, live for a couple of years like they've stated they want to do. Um, but I would be shocked if I if I owned the Nintendo system that an Animal Crossing game is coming out on. Um, I would be shocked if I didn't pick it up in the future. I think I'm probably going to play this game for decades. Oh, nice. And I guess sort of a related question. Have Has New Horizons sort of encouraged you to either look at the previous titles, mostly like the spinoffs? I don't know if you have played Pocket Camp on, on mobile. Uh, Pocket Camp's an interesting one. So I played Pocket Camp right when it came out. I was already a member of, uh, of Discord, some Nintendo Discords. And uh, I really got turned off by it. I mean, Splatoon was still brand new. I already had a Switch, so that was definitely an aspect of mm. not, not really playing uh, many video games other than Splatoon for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I, I found Pocket Camp to be uh, not, not really easy to be onboarded. Uh, it was my absolute first Animal Crossing experience other than the Animal Crossing track in Mario Kart. Uh, and I, I didn't get it. I say I probably played it for less than 10 hours and just put it down, uninstalled it. And the, the difference for New Horizons onboarding, uh, I mean, New Horizons was, was addictive and in Pocket Camp, I uninstalled. <laughs> so I, I don't see going back to Pocket Camp. <laughs> oh, nice. Gotcha. Cool. Well, is there anything else in your mind about Animal Crossing or anything else you wish to say? Um, I think there's, there's one small aspect that i that i do think would be it would change the game maybe it wouldn't be animal crossing anymore um but i i believe uh Bexilla over on the uh nintendo jump podcast that i'm recommending to you had talked about <laughs> a hard mode switch uh, for animal crossing where uh you know fish and bugs would be harder to catch where scorpions and tarantulas were harder and more of a threat right. uh, maybe balloons flew three times as fast um you know I, the, these a hard mode in Animal Crossing, I think, would be quite the interesting addition. I don't think that mm. it should be mandatory because I think there's a, a big benefit to it being such a relaxing game. But I think there's there's some really some of the challenges from Animal Crossing, like the uh, like the the bug off, um, are just so much fun to do this competitive thing inside. And I I think that there's like a, a whole nother gear there if they wanted to um if they just r ramped up and made made the collecting harder made the game a little more dangerous <laughs> yeah and going back to what you said about this being from the splatoon 2 development team i mean they, they kind of like competitive things and they like challenges and battles so yeah i can kind of see at least the hard mode maybe probably having been considered at some point and maybe it's a Nook Mile Island uh, that, you know, 5% chance of showing up and all of a sudden, you, you know, you get there and the sky is purple and like <laughs> like the Halloween purple uh, and, you know, here it comes. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Well, and that was one thing, too, about uh, the launch of New Horizons. I um, won the code from Swilly, was already pretty excited about it, watched the the final directs and uh they talked about dangerous things coming out at night yeah uh and i i thought it was going to be a scarier more dangerous game uh <laughs> at, at night i thought it was going to be a little more like minecraft uh mm. you know with, with like real danger yeah <laughs> and uh and i'm still not opposed to that um you know it, optionally optionally yeah <laughs> <laughs> nice cool all right, Nathan, thank you so much. This has been very awesome to hear about your experience with New Horizons. And it's honestly, it's been a pleasure to have you um, as part of this, both in Haken and in Nintendo Jump. It's been awesome to play this game alongside you. Absolutely, and I'll continue to play. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. Thank you. 
All right, hey Haken, it's Nina here with my really good friend Michi. You might have heard me talk about her on the podcast before, or if you hang around Haken Discord, you might have interacted her with her before because she's like the flower queen of Animal Crossing. So how's it going, Michi? It's going great. I, I'm sure I've been decrowned by now with the flower <laughs> title, but I, I was there. I was there in the big movement, you were. the flower movement, I call it. The flower movement. <laughs> it's so nice to have you on finally, Michi. Oh my goodness. It's nice to uh, be here. And hopefully it'll be nice listening to myself later. And oh, it's the Not fast forwarding through it, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> I won't let you. I'm not going to let you do that. <laughs> I'll have a listening party. It'll, it'll be a big thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. Candles, wine, <laughs> podcasts. <laughs> Um, so we're here to talk about Animal Crossing um, and players who are fairly new to Animal Crossing, which is kind of you, but kind of not you. So um, it's going to be a little bit of a different interview, I think, than Chewy and Sergio's guests. But um, tell us what your first um, Animal Crossing game was. So I played, and we verified this beforehand, but I played <laughs> Animal Crossing on the GameCube in high school which I now know is Population Growing, which I <laughs> didn't know it had a name. I just was like, hey, I'm over at my husband's house, well, boyfriend's house then. Uh, we're playing Animal Crossing. <laughs> yeah. So did you guys play it a lot or was it just something you kind of dipped into? It was something, I mean, we played most days because we would go uh, to his house after school let out uh, and his mom would also play. So we would all be like leaving each other letters in the game. And nice. I just remember it being so much more simple, though. I don't think yeah. I realized what the game would become. <laughs> I didn't even, I honestly <laughs> didn't know the series continued until New Horizons was coming out. Well, so there you go. That's why that's why you are uh, qualified for this interview, yes. I guess, <laughs> is that after you played a little bit of Population Growing, that was it for you. You didn't play um, Wild World. You didn't play City Folk. None of the I don't even know what those games. are. No. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so when, um, when was the first time you heard about New Horizons? I mean, it had to have been from you. I'm trying to think if you told me about it before you were even mentioning that I should play it. Because like, I know you were making the countdown with Chewie mm -hmm. and Haken and all that. Mm -hmm. But I'm trying to remember if we ever discussed it beforehand. I just knew that you were really excited it was coming out. And you're like, mm -hmm. we could play it together. And I was like, oh, well, I'm down for a game that we could play together. And I was saying, we're going to send each other some letters occasionally. I didn't, <laughs> I didn't realize what it was going to be. <laughs> You were thinking it was going to be like full on population growing just yes. with a brand new look. Maybe. Yeah. I was like, oh, it'll be prettier. <laughs> so I was like, <laughs> I'll shake some trees. I'll catch some fish, which, I, you know, we obviously do. I mean, but... <laughs> yeah, there's not much of a difference. Really. <laughs> That's the that same thing. Just like Sea of Thieves. Yeah. I mean, it's uh, Animal same, Crossing same. if uh, Nina's playing. It is. I can turn any game into Animal Crossing. <laughs> so um, and then I guess I showed you the trailer right like yeah I you every time out. yeah <laughs> every time one would come out you'd be like michi michi <laughs> and this i guess was it was before quarantine because i would see that some of them yeah. at your apartment yeah and you're like michi where are you watching like you <laughs> michi are you paying <laughs> enough attention to this and i was like I i'm watching i'm watching it nina i'm watching <laughs> oh no now everybody knows what it's like to be friends with me <laughs> <laughs> may they all be so blessed as to have a nina in their life <laughs> It's like, uh, it reminds me of when uh, my brother and I were flying to, uh, <laughs> where were we going? England? And he made me watch the Batman movie with him. I'm so on a tangent now. Um, but he was we, so we excited warned you, for me to we? watch. Yes, we did. <laughs> I was so excited, or he was so excited for me to watch Batman with him that he would like press our two seat screens, like pause them and be like, okay, Nina, guess what's about to happen? And be like, oh, Jack, let gosh. me watch the movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh so it runs in the family i'm sorry we get excited about things i'm sorry that's a that's, that's a that's a good quality i'm sure i guess so i guess so um so you played you picked it up um the day it dropped right oh you, yeah you i was awake at night. night oh yeah yeah I tell us about that journey <laughs> oh my gosh oh well it was a journey <laughs> i so i uh, i bought it on the switch 
digitally as, you know, I'm sure it's the most common thing to do now. But yeah. I, I don't really buy most games digitally. Not that I play a lot of video games up until now. Um, but yeah, most of the time I would only buy the hard game. I was like, I don't ever want to, you know, have this game taken away from me. So I didn't usually buy things digitally, but I didn't plan ahead. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh God, it's coming mm -hmm. out tonight. I guess I'm just going to buy it <laughs> as soon as it lets me. And I was like refreshing and I was like, okay, there it is. So I mm -hmm. loaded mm -hmm. it up. Philip was in the other room. I didn't know That's he wanted husband. to play. Yeah. I didn't <laughs> know he wanted to play, even though he says I knew that. So I picked the island. I didn't I didn't go back at all. I just picked out of the, the choices that came up first. I got a green airport and took off from there. And mm -hmm. Philip came out of the room and I was like halfway into naming everything. And he was like, what, what are you doing? Oh, no. Like, what, what do you mean? What I'm, I'm playing Animal Crossing? He's like, well, I, I, wanted, I wanted to do this, too. <laughs> so I felt really bad for a long time, but I, I remember he oh, never man. said anything to us about being super excited mm -hmm. to play. So, of all the times I showed you guys the trailer, exactly. <laughs> so, oh man, I still shared with him. <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't and really he ended involved. Up playing. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. liked the fishing. Yes, he's a fishing master. His one of his mm -hmm. rooms in the house is still like in full fishing decor. <laughs> But he's totally dropped off now, right? Oh, yeah. He hasn't played in Since months. Since Ghost of I mean, Tsushima came out. <laughs> <laughs> I think even before then, but yeah, yeah. I mean, definitely not since then. Yeah. Okay. And how are you doing playing? How, like, I know, like, the first, what, month and a half of, of us playing and <sighs> through quarantine, we were hours and hours worth hours. of gameplay I mean, I was every day. I playing it like it was the actual life. I mean, I was... Yeah. Playing each hour like the real hour in life. It was, I, I mean, I play, I remember when I played Skyrim, I would, you know, play for like 24 hours at a time and go and go and go. I surpassed the amount of hours I have in Skyrim in Animal Crossing probably in the first month. I mean, it was crazy. Yeah. And I played Skyrim for months. Oh um, yeah, I, I remember we kept checking in on our hour count, and then we, we were, were so like, "We're gonna make that private. Uh, nobody yeah. needs to know what kind of person <laughs> I am. That I am so addicted to this video game." Uh, uh, you but know, yeah, quarantine it, helped with that, and I mean, it was probably necessary. It was so nice to have something that was really distracting like that. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, no, I played. Like, I would wake up and turn it on. If I played, I would play overnight so that I could hear the 5 a.m. music. Because yeah. I'm not a morning person, but that's my favorite. So I would stay up all night playing to hear the 5 a.m. music and then go to sleep. <laughs> oh, man. So, okay. So we were super into it for a while. I'm still, I'm not as crazy as I was. I'm still trying to play every day. And I do all right with that. Um, but how are you doing with your gameplay nowadays? I am nowadays? not an everyday person anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah. I've definitely gotten addicted to some other video games, but I'm still <laughs> well, like, yeah. I'm sort of like a week on week off gal right now. Okay. And then what about like when updates happen? You know, are you keeping up with that? I'm not, I'm really bad. Okay. I, I haven't caught I haven't been keeping up with the fish or the bugs necessarily. Mm -hmm. Um, and that's, so I'm going to, I don't know if you mind if I skip ahead to that time traveling question. No, not at all. So I haven't time traveled yet, but I am really getting tempted to time travel backwards because yes. I kind of hate <laughs> that I, if I, you know, if I don't, like if I'm doing something else with my day that I can't still enjoy the days in the video game that I couldn't play that day. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. you know, I was one of those, you know, one of the cult members of you can never time travel. That's not. That's not playing the game. And now I'm like, hey, what about that day I missed? I should be able to play that day yeah. still. It's a video game. I can pretty much do whatever I want anyway. Yeah. So. Oh, man. I'm I'm in that backwards time traveling boat. I'm also. definitely going to relive several things. Plus, on my birthday, I forgot to grab my birthday song from KK. Oh. So I'm definitely setting up a time to time travel backwards to at least get that because I have all the other KK songs. I still just need my birthday. Yeah. Did you play the Halloween event? Nina. No. <laughs> Don't hate me. <laughs> I did <laughs> I didn't. And I've got like three million pieces of candy, right? And I've got no idea what those yeah. are for. So I, I again I yeah. want to time travel back and get to enjoy that holiday. But if I get caught up with Philip and we want to like watch a bunch of movies, I don't wanna yeah. be like, oh honey, I gotta check into, you know, my 
my fake life <laughs> before I can be with you. And, <laughs> which I may have done during a lot, a lot of quarantine. Be like, oh, For I got to I got to keep up with this. This is what's important right now. <laughs> yeah, Philip, you're on hold. I have flowers to water. <laughs> hey, I've me. got to get that blue rose. Everything else had to be on pause <laughs> until I made that blue rose. <laughs> amazing <laughs> look i you can try time travel back and play um halloween play your birthday feel free it's your game it is and that's that's what i'm gonna do i'm totally gonna do it i haven't done it yet but i'm, I'm gonna do it <laughs> so okay this is not a question that's on the list so i apologize for throwing you for a loop but please don't because my notes are all over the place and i think <laughs> we won't even get to them so let's okay. We're going to freestyle. Okay. (laughs) Um, If you were to try and convince someone else to play this game, and you might have with our friend Shando. I feel like you convinced her. I did. How would you, like, describe this game to someone? Oh, man. I guess I would say it's a life simulator, right? Isn't that sort of the term for it? It's. I, pr- I, I like so. to think of it, it's almost like you're role-playing. Like, you're in this little world, and you can make it whatever you want to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, And you get to build a little town. I guess it's like cutesy, cutesy Sims. I didn't play Stardew Valley, but I hear people say it's like that a little bit. Um, yeah. Yeah, I just, especially with this one, it's like you're on an island. So I would tell them, specifically, if we're talking about Animal Crossing's New Horizon. Yeah. Then... I would say it's it's your own island and you're making your own little life on an island and you're sort of in charge of the town even if Tom Tom Nook thinks he might be I'm I'm in charge I don't know what he thinks <laughs> that's true <laughs> that's true <laughs> I ask you this question because anytime I try to describe this game to someone I feel like it sounds like the most boring game that could ever exist it's right like you you live on this island with animals and you look for fossils and you uh get fish you uh, i catch bugs and yeah yeah you lay down a path if you want to (laughs) and they all look at me like i'm a crazy person but i think if Um, anyone ever played any of those pc games where mm -hmm. like the roller coaster tycoon or the sims or anything where you're building something Mm -hmm. i think if they enjoyed something like that then they would enjoy something like animal crossing that's true. That's a good way to put it. Maybe you need to be the brand ambassador and I'll take a step back. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know about that. Because you got me to play. And I, you know, I, up true. until recently, I was not a huge gamer. I, Animal Crossings may have been the, well, I guess Skyrim. Skyrim was probably yeah. the gateway drug into uh, video games. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, this really got me playing oh, on a daily basis. <laughs> playing video games on a daily basis. Yeah. And now you're, now you're, you know, pirate lord and sea of thieves and, oh, well, and you hunt ghosts for a living you know <laughs> i get paid to hunt ghosts and uh yeah stay on the seas michi's in it now guys all glory you know <laughs> <laughs> all right well tell us a little bit about your town what is your town's name so my town's name is viaje and mm-hmm. hopefully chewy or someone who is actually better at speaking spanish than me will confirm if that's the the right pronunciation <laughs> But I wanted it to be something just, you know, a word that signified that this was supposed to be like a trip or a journey or an adventure, since that's sort of what it yeah. felt like. I, especially when we were playing in a pandemic, and I was like, I just want it to feel like I'm getting away, that I'm making my own adventure, even though it's in a video game instead of in real life. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And and what? who is your all-time best friend villager in Viaje? So... I will never, ever, <laughs> ever let this villager go. All, other villagers have come and gone, and I finally got to the point where everyone else can come and go. But Bertha, the beautiful blue hippo, is <laughs> the love of my Animal Crossing life. Oh my gosh, amazing. <laughs> so if I find her in the morning, she'll be on a bench, and she'll be reading, and I'll sit down beside her, and she'll like, you know, she'll give me a cute little look, and then she'll go back to reading. She's, I mean, she's the best. When we talk, it's about... <sighs> books and movies and cookies she's she's a doll she's a doll and I love her this was so refreshing to me when you started getting really attached to her because I feel like the hippos aren't very popular and so you coming in as like a fairly new player yeah like your take on the villagers was so interesting to me (laughs) I loved it I and like you were like adamant for months that snake the rabbit was a girl she okay (laughs) snake is a girl I love it. I love it. She is a it, swole, working out, 
<laughs> girl bunny named Snake, and I uh-huh. love her. I that's one of my villagers that I had to let go. She was one of those originals, so the house was horrible. Yeah. But yeah. if if I get the chance, I'm gonna bring her back. Snake the girl. I'm gonna bring her back. Oh my gosh, future is female. Snake, got it. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so we've talked about the things that you really like about Animal Crossing, like the um, your love of hippos and your love of flowers. <laughs> um, but is there anything that you don't enjoy about the game? So as a very competitive person, I do hate the way it felt for so long at the beginning where the grind wasn't just because I was having a good time every single time I was playing. It was like, I've got to get every single recipe first. I've got to catch mm. every bug or fish first. I've got to make sure I hurry up and do my layout on my island like this quickly. And I have to have a completed oh. island. It just, it really felt like a huge rush to start with. Yeah. And I regret taking it that way to start with. I wish I had really mm. slowed down. And that's probably why I don't feel so bad playing like a week on and week off right now is I do want to mm-hmm. play this game a long time. And I, you know, the updates will be coming out for what do they say? At least another year after the first full year so two years yeah hopefully yeah so yeah I don't I don't want to rush through it anymore and I was definitely doing that and it's sort of the pros and cons of being in like a discord community is seeing what every single person is doing and be like oh they're they're better than me at this and I wish I was doing it like that um but once you learn to love your island like I definitely have a norm core island I don't think people come to my island there's no majestic waterfalls or <laughs> <laughs> and it's not really that really cute cottage core that I love. It's it's very norm core because I just saw mm-hmm. how it developed and I just let it go where it went. Yeah. So I wish yeah. I hadn't felt so competitive to start with and that's the one thing I don't currently like about playing Animal Crossing New Horizon. Yeah, I know. I totally understand. And I think that we had to have a couple episodes um towards the beginning of this where we just were like everybody needs to just slow down yeah, and stop comparing yourself to other towns. Like every single one is going to be different. So I know a lot of people were feeling that way too. And it's just so sad because it it is, it should just be a simple, relaxing, cute game. Yeah. And it just felt so weird to be like, Oh, I really like that Island more than I like mine. But Mm -hmm. I mean, that's why there's a whole bunch of islands and you can go visit a whole bunch of islands. It's not, it, should, it shouldn't feel that way. You should just be able to love your own island and have yeah. fun building it. It's not going to be like everyone's island. And someone's mm-hmm. going to come to yours and be like, oh, my gosh, I would have never thought to do this this way. Even if it's a part of your island that you think is the most normal, <laughs> bland thing, oh. someone else will come over and be like, oh, my gosh, this is yeah. my favorite thing of your island. And it's something you didn't even think twice of. Absolutely. No, and I love that part, too, that everybody just kind of comes together as a community. And yes, there is some comparisons, but you build off of each other, too. I yes, like that part. Yeah. Nice. So are you are you in it now, Michi? Are you going to continue playing like it, more Animal Crossing titles, do you think? So when I read that question, I really had to think, <laughs> mm. especially because, you know, it would be so far in the future before they would make another game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I really don't know. I don't know if this one would ever get old enough to me to want a new one. Mm-hmm. And what <laughs> would a new one be like? Because again, this one is so much more than population growing. Oh, yeah, I, absolutely. I don't know if I need more, honestly. I know a lot of people mm-hmm. complain, cause, but and I feel like a lot of the complaints come from playing the previous titles and comparing it to those. Yeah. I think the game is really great. I don't usually feel like anything's missing other than, you know, it sometimes is is sad to miss out like on a seasonal recipe and I wish it came in more different ways or it was more Mm -hmm. at like a regular time. Like I knew when I could count on it instead of having to guess or play sporadically and hope I played long enough to get the next recipe. Mm -hmm. Um, But as far as playing the game, I I don't really think anything's missing because it's so much more than it was when I played population growing, I'm like, I can go in the water. You're kidding me. (laughs) 
<laughs> that's good. That's a good way to look at it. Because I think we do spend, or at least Chewy, Sergio, and I spend a lot of time comparing it to New Leaf, which right. was just like a stair step down where you're like, you were at the bottom of the staircase, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> so you yeah. climbed the whole staircase. So I was that's like, interesting. Yeah. Once we got past Easter, I was like, oh, this game is incredible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Easter. Bunny day. Oh, my if gosh. I dug up one more egg. <laughs> What what do you think your favorite holiday has been so far? So I really loved wedding season. I thought mm. that one was the cutest because I liked it changed each week as far as going out and setting up the different wedding, uh, I don't even know what you call it, wedding themes. Yeah. Um, I do think that they could have even gone further with that, like really made them even more different as far as like what you did when you were arranging stuff or what counted. Mm-hmm. For the themes um but i just thought that one was the best because it actually kept me coming back each week to the event yeah whereas other seasons i'm like okay well i'm gonna go hardcore that first week <laughs> and then i sort of trail off because i'm like yeah I've, i mean i played too much to start with and i've got four hundred thousand pumpkins like <laughs> <laughs> yes <laughs> And then I miss Halloween. I made all those pumpkins and then never even followed through because it was so amazing. monotonous. Yeah, amazing. <laughs> I totally understand. I totally understand. That's cool. So um, uh, what about like, what about like if they do any side titles like they did with um, Happy Home Designer or there's, you know, Pocket Camp on the um, mobile? Do you think that you'd be interested in even looking into stuff like that or you're I would. still just okay? I okay. definitely would look at like a side title where it's a spinoff. So it's not just the same game reinvented, but like one of the side ones. Mm-hmm. Um, I did download Pocket Camp when I was like in the the big throws of it all and was playing for hours and hours each day, but I never did more than two or three days on that. So yeah, it would have to be like one of those things, like a happy home designer or one of the ones that you guys were wishing were out there. Yeah. <laughs> With, on like the other episodes where you talk about, it'd be so cool if they made this spin off. Like I thought those sounded really mm-hmm. interesting, but yeah. Well, yeah. we'll keep our fingers. Yeah, animal crossed. Definitely. For that. Animal crossed. <laughs> Absolutely. Michi, thank you so much for talking with me on Haken. Well, anytime, Nina. It's, it's <laughs> nothing we don't do every every weekend outside, is it? That's true. <laughs> That's true. I go over and just play Animal Crossing. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, man. Good. Well, I'm glad that you're part of our Animal Crossing family now um, and that I bullied you into playing this game. <laughs> well, I'm glad to be a part of it. And of course, being in the Discord has been yeah. incredible. I mean, just the people are incredible and all the all the help there. You know, none of us are like, hey, I'm selling you this for this mini Nook Mile ticket. You know, everyone's yeah. like, I've got this yeah. for free. Come pick this up. I, got, You know, it's it's been really great. Oh yeah, Haken is the best. So if anybody's listening and still hasn't joined the Discord, you you're missing heard out. It from Michi. You are missing out. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, thank you again, Michi. Thank you, Nina. All right, everybody. Well, I hope you enjoyed all three of these interviews. I'm sure they were a lot of fun. I haven't heard them yet. I still have to edit the podcast, but I bet they were great. Anyways, let's go ahead and hop into Haken's Islander Corner to end the show. For those of you who don't know, every single week we ask our patrons on Patreon a question and read some of their answers out loud here. This week's question was, when did you first hear about Animal Crossing? So I guess we'll go Sergio, then Nina, then me on this one. Okay, sounds good. So our first answer is from Kimbers, and they said, As we went into lockdown in March, I offered to buy a Switch game for each of my daughters. One of them wanted to try Animal Crossing. After watching her play for a week, I decided I wanted to try it too. I think I kind of crowded her out with my loyal gameplay and ended up taking control over the island, doing the stuff that she didn't want to do, like turnips and decorating the island. (laughs) But now she's back in college and has her own Switch and island. It's nice because... Now we get to visit each other and play together more easily than when we share the island. Mm. Oh, nice. (laughs) I love that. I love those experiences when, like, parents buy their kids something (laughs) and then just, like, (laughs) like it a lot more than that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that's going to be me for sure. (laughs) All right, let's see. Um, Kakalu says, I read about Animal Crossing for GameCube in Nintendo Power Magazine. 
I remember reading the journal entries of the various Nintendo journalists who were playing it over the course of a couple issues. I particularly loved one person's recounting of how they had to sleep on a chair because they sold their bed first thing. Oh, <laughs> that's amazing. I was. I would l- hmm? What were you going to say? Oh, sorry. I was just saying that um, as I was reading through these Patreon answers, Nintendo Power Magazine seemed to be like a big, a big introduction mm. to people. And I kind of miss that we don't get stuff like that anymore. Yeah, I and that's kind of what I was thinking too. Like I'm so interested in like going back to those issues where they played this game because it sounds like a really cool kind of story to do like as a magazine. Um I guess we get versions of this in people's blogs and things. Mm-hmm. Um I know Nina, you kind of shared the Tumblr days with yeah. me and I just loved seeing when New Leaf came out, people just like doing their daily updates on what they were up to in the game, you know? <laughs> it was really fun to see that. It was. Nice. And I'm, I'm with Kakulu. That's how I found out about the first game. Oh, it cool. It enticed me enough to, to go get it. Do you still have that issue? Uh, no, I recently threw them all away. <laughs> oh, no. How things. recently? <laughs> uh, a couple of months ago. Oh, man. I w- you should have told me. I would have loved <laughs> to get my hands on that. <laughs> All right, so the next answer is from Megan Diane, and they said, I saw it at a family video and thought the box art looked cute. Honestly, how I picked out most games when I was eight years old. (laughs) This is what I did, too. (laughs) This is my story. (laughs) Yeah, like, it's such a funky game when you look at it. Like, Mm -hmm. it's, each of the box arts just, like, it's not like other games, I feel. You see this like fun little colorful world with all these animals and these little funky looking characters. I'm I know for me, I would have loved to see that and probably would have picked it up for that same reason. But <laughs> I think the first time I heard about the game was actually just like a friend in school telling me about it. And I had no visuals to put it oh. together at all. <laughs> but I knew I wanted it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. The next answer is from Kelly. They said, I first discovered Animal Crossing when I was a kid. Every weekend, my family and I would go to Blockbuster to rent movies and games. I saw Animal Crossing population growing and thought it looked fun, but my sister said it looked stupid. So I rented it to prove her wrong, and boy, was she wrong. We have both played every game in the series since. (laughs) Nice. Good, good, good doing. Oh my gosh, that's, that, that's how you treat a sibling right. <laughs> yeah, and that's the, you know, you always want to prove them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, Let Me Be says, it was just after the GameCube game was released, and I saw a pro- pr- promo poster for it at the store. Or maybe it was Nintendo Power Magazine, I can't remember. But I do remember seeing the cover for the first time and instantly falling in love with it. And lucky me, my parents got it for me for Christmas with a brand new GameCube system. The rest is history. (laughs) I love that. That's another (laughs) thing we're missing is people renting it and and seeing it in stores and things. Like, (laughs) I kind of miss all of that stuff. Yeah, (laughs) the promotional stuff for this game game to like new horizons i remember every single day that somebody found a new promotional poster in like (sighs) taiwan or something it was all over the internet (laughs) and it was exciting to see you know um i definitely made a trip out to like best buy just to see like the trailer they had on their switch there the different posters that they had because i just wanted to see it i just wanted to see all of the promotional stuff (laughs) Uh, I also remember, like, when GameStop was coming out with their, like, physical, like, Tom Nook six-foot-tall pictures stands, you know, Mm -hmm. like, cutouts and, like, posters and things. And everyone was, like, rushing to GameStop to be like, when you take these down, can you call me? I will take them home with me. (laughs) And then lockdown (laughs) happened. So I never actually heard about anyone actually getting to take something home because I guess everything was thrown out afterwards. I have no clue. Yeah, I'm not sure where that stuff goes. Uh, I don't know. I've heard stories of people saying, oh, yeah, you know, it just gets sent back to the company. And I was like, what are they going to do with it, though? Like, yeah. do they care? <laughs> <laughs> There's yeah. probably hundreds of these everywhere. <laughs> it's yeah. a closet full of Tom Nooks. Yeah. 
So our last answer here is from Mika Weidenhaupt, and they said, my sister, who is two years older than me, got Wild World for new, brand new th a DS. I didn't even own a DS, and when I first saw it, and she said that you live in a little town in this game, talk to animals, and collect fish and bugs, I thought it sounded stupid. After trying it out for 30 minutes, I desperately wanted to get my own DS and copy <laughs> of Wild World. I was infected then and there. <laughs> infected? <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's how it goes. I mean, I remember my mom probably watched me play on the TV downstairs once because I was like, that TV's bigger. I want to see what my game looks like on there. Like, So I took my GameCube down, went <laughs> walked down and started playing and everything. And she was watching it and she just did not understand what was going on. She's like, why are you just like walking around? I don't get this. It's dumb. <laughs> and that's kind of the impression that Animal Crossing tends to give at yeah, first, where yeah. it's like, what are you doing? It doesn't make any sense to me. <laughs> yeah, why is, is this fun? This? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was a lot easier for my mom to cheer for me playing like these really gruesome fighting games <laughs> on the TV. <laughs> uh, that always surprised me. I'd be like, okay, cool. Mom's okay with this. <laughs> The first time my mom saw Animal Crossing, um, I think it was actually New Horizons. I had her over and she like thought it was hilarious that the character looked just like me. And she was like, she runs just like you. Look at her little legs go. And I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, mom. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty great you know it's funny because i just got to see this experience for the first time well not the first time but like somebody's first experience of seeing animal crossing so jackie and i we've been playing we'll go visit her family from time to time and you know we just kind of had the game set up on the tv and jackie's making a profile for her little her younger sister mm. and Jackie's mom walks in and she sees the the character and she's like, oh my gosh, that looks just like her. <laughs> so, so, yeah, it, it's really funny to see that and mm -hmm. see, I guess parents just be like, oh yeah, that does look like you. That's great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you all so much for tuning in to this episode of Haken, an Animal Crossing podcast. Don't want the episode to end? Well, you can keep the conversation going by Nintendo switching over to our Discord. Just follow the link in the description, and you can talk with other people who love Animal Crossing as much as you do, including Sergio, Nina, and me. Want to support the show in a bigger way and get your voice heard during the show? Visit patreon.com slash ChewyPlaysNintendo. You can support our show with just $1, get special access to a secret room on Discord, join in on the Haken Islander Corner, and even read a monthly newsletter covering all things Haken and Chewy Plays. We really appreciate the support and put your money towards some great things on the show. Tuned in on YouTube? The comments are a great place to let us know your answers to the Haken Islander Corner. When did you first hear about Animal Crossing? If you dig what you hear, please KK slide over to that review section on your platform of choice. Let people know what they're missing out on. Haken is wild production brought to you by Chewy, Sergio, Nina, and all of our patrons. We thank you for listening, and we hope you have a great week. Goodbye, everybody. See you all next time. <laughs>